Alright, so talking about videos, let's get into that. My top tips for videos are embracing mistakes. Like Jeremy said, you are not perfect. When you're in front of a classroom, you stumble, you think, correct yourself. Yeah, you make mistakes and you fix them. And I think it's really, that's a really good thing for two reasons. One is that it's really good for students to see you make mistakes. Like in my working out one of my mathematical equations, if I screw up, I won't go back and re-record it. I'll go, oh, hang on, that's that because, and I'll go back and fix it. And I think it's healthy for them to see that. Um, the other one is, if you're trying to pump out the egos for your classes, trying to make them perfect is not sustainable. You need to be able to get through them pretty quickly. Um, my other one is keep it short. Again, for two reasons. One is that it's easy for them to find it if it's one concept per video, but also it's more engaging. So pretty much everyone, if you go on to watch a YouTube video, the first thing you look at is the number down in the corner to see whether or not you can be bothered watching it. And chances are, if it's a 15 minute video, your kids are gonna look at it and go, no, not happening. If it's a five minute video, they're much more likely to commit to watching that for home. Um, and the other one is find a method that's sustainable for you. So just because somebody else makes their videos a certain way doesn't mean you have to. I personally, I'll show you in a minute, I use my tablet um, to write on, to solve equations and things. But some of the other teachers at my school couldn't get a hang of it, didn't like it, hated it. They use a document camera instead because they find that much more natural for them. So it's whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong way to do it. My four main video tools are screencast matic It's amazing and I use it for everything. Um, my tablet, again, and I've got it over there if anyone wants to come and have a look at it later. Uh, a document camera. So that's sort of a very basic version of Jeremy's studio. So having, I found that the science department had it and didn't know they had it, so I stole it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it just sits on the desk, it comes over, and it looks down, whatever you're doing on the table. And the last one is Ed Puzzle, which is somewhere for hosting your videos. So it makes them interactive. You can track who's watched the videos and who hasn't. You can embed questions into the videos and you can mark them, you can write comments to their answers, all those sorts of things. And I think Jeremy plans to talk about a couple of different websites like that tomorrow as well. So that's just one. It's free and I like it because it doesn't have a pro version, whereas some of the other ones, you get go to click a certain button and they yell at you that you need to have a pro version for that and that just annoys me. So I use Edpuzzle because it's the free one. All right, so I wanna show you just a couple of different quick snippets of my videos and the different ways that I make them. So this first one is just a keynote with Screencast and Matic Workshop. So if we're looking at our school again, we might look at the different year groups. So year seven is a much bigger year group than year 12. So we take more year seven students than we would in year 12. Now as that angle this is increases, Screencast and Matic over a program called GeoGebra. And you can see it starts off increasing pretty quickly. And then it sort of slows down as it comes towards the top of that circle. From that 50, our X this is our using my tablet, and our 700 is our hypotenuse. So that means we're going to use what's the hypotenuse is sine. So that area would be so the dot times the half part. times the base, which is 15, times the height, which is that 18. Mode two, that's two, just the dominant and then you're going to your dominant hands this column, and then you're non-dominant if your y column to so go through an x and x volume. And then minus one, minus four. And this is just me making a mistake. Oh, sorry, hang on. That should be a two there, when I extend that out, which would make this here a minus 14. So that, yeah, that last one's just an example of me going, oh, hang on, that's not the right answer. What did I do? And I went back and almost every student, some of them were watching it in class, and almost everyone that was watching it in class put their hand up and went, Miss, you made a mistake. And then I went, okay, what should it be? And they told me, and they told me where I made a mistake. And then they pressed play and kept watching because they were happy, and then they saw me fix it anyway. So even if they hadn't picked it up themselves, they still see it, but I think it's really good that they did pick it up themselves. Um, my last two things are, it's really important to get your students on board before you start creating your buttons. Okay. So if you just go in and go, this is how we're going to do things and we're going to change it and tell them they have to watch videos and phone work, I don't think it's going to work very well. You need to get them on board um, and get them taking ownership of it. So 
talk to, I recommend is that you talk to students really openly about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Tell them that it's something new that you're trying and encourage them to give you feedback and suggestions as to how you could improve what you're doing, how you can improve your class time or your videos or whatever it is. Um, the way I do that is through anonymous surveys. So I set them up just on um, Google Forms, make them anonymous, and the students can write whatever they want in there, positive, negative, whatever. I share it with all my students then so they can all see what everyone else has written. And then I have a conversation with them about it. So I go, okay, this was suggested and I think that's awesome and we're going to try that. Or this was suggested and this is why I don't think that's feasible. So one of the suggestions from my year 11s earlier in the year was give us more time. And I just went, sorry, you can't. We need to get all the content finished before year 11 and if I give you more time, we're not going to get through it. So there's, yeah, having a conversation with them about it and getting their feedback so they can take ownership of it. You're always going to get some students who are resistant to change but if you have a conversation with them about it first and check in with them and make it theirs you should overcome most of that the other thing i recommend is getting your parent their parents on board not your parents their parents <laughs> <laughs> um if you're expecting students to watch videos at home then getting your parents support is amazing parents often especially I think with maths, but probably for everything else as well. They're not always very like, comfortable helping with homework, traditional homework. And they're not comfortable with the way they explain it or the method that you're using or just with the content. Whereas watching a video, that's something they can make sure their students done. And that's something they're comfortable supporting at home. The way I did that, you could write a letter or something, but I kind of went and I'm flipping my glasses, my students are going to be watching videos. I made a video. So I made a video, I put it up on Edpuzzle and my students had to show it to their parents. Oh my work. So the video, I'm not going to show you the whole thing. Hi, my name is Sophie like and I'm a child's math teacher this year. I wanted to make this video because that class is going to be running a little bit differently to a traditional classroom this year. So you get the idea. I went to <laughs> it. You can watch that later. I can put it somewhere if we have somewhere to upload it. I'd like you to send it home as just that and then have the parents go, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> um, but I've had feedback from parents as well saying they're really happy with how things are going and they feel um, really supportive of that. Um, made me lose my train of thought. Sorry. I think that's it. That's all right. Other than that, happy to think. Like Jeremy said, get in there, give it a go, see what happens. Thanks. Hello. And then we've got time for Q&A with Heather, so I'm sure